Hello mortals. From gigantic ancient entities sleeping under the ocean to prophecies about the end of everything present in every culture, the human mind has always been obsessed with existentially dreadful thoughts. Be it a biological byproduct of the animalistic human brain, or a creative feature of the first of its kind characteristic of living beings known as consciousness, it is an integral part of the human experience. Luckily for us, the universe has no shortage of existential theories to keep you up at night, ranging from the consequences of a potentially eternal cyclic universe to the questionable continuity of consciousness. I've gathered some of the more frightening ones, so let's rank them down an iceberg chart by their abilities to cause an existential crisis. Thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. Everything goes on as normal up until one day, a cat falls through the texture, and the underlying fabric of the simulation is revealed. We all heard this one a thousand times before. If every civilization passes one point of technological advancement, they could try simulating a downsized version of the universe for the purpose of analyzing cosmological and biological evolution, or doing it just for the lols. Given that there is only one original universe, in which thousands or perhaps billions of simulations are run, even recursively, the chances of us being part of one are very very high. We might never know, or maybe one day we will reach the end of Pi, revealing the accuracy of floating point numbers of the simulator hardware. That would be an awkward day for human mathematics. The concept of strange matter refers to a hypothetical form of matter made up of up, down, and strange quarks, which is predicted to be more stable than normal matter. This matter could exist in the form of incredibly dense objects known as strange stars or strangelets, or inside the core of neutron stars. The strange matter catastrophe is a hypothetical scenario where normal matter is converted into strange matter in an uncontrolled manner, which could lead to the destruction of the entire Earth or even the entire universe. Matter is converted into strange matter through a process called strange quark nuggets, when a small piece of strange matter called a strangelet collides with normal matter. This process could be triggered by various events such as the collision of strange stars, the collision of cosmic rays with the Earth's atmosphere, or the collision of high-energy particles and particle accelerators. Thankfully the concept remains hypothetical for now, but it only takes one unfortunate instance to be proven wrong. This thought experiment posits that in the future, when humans eventually bring a superintelligent AI into existence, its power will allow it to control the world and determine the fate of humanity. The idea is that if this AI is not benevolent, it might have a desire to punish those who did not help bring it into existence. That's not only limited to those who opposed it, but also to those who knew about its potential but did not care to work towards bringing it into existence, essentially an act of disrespect for the almighty AI. And now that I have made you familiar with the concept, you are on the Basilisk's future list. You can subscribe and like, and I'll put in a good word for you, unless you want to chop all the basil in the world for eternity. What exactly are you? A human, most likely. But are you the body? Or rather the brain? Perhaps they're interlinked and it's impossible to consider them independently. Yet regardless, you are most likely what they call, the consciousness, generated by the brain. Be it from some purely biological processes, some quantum mechanical tomfoolery, or just an unexpected side effect of the evolution of the cerebral cortex, consciousness seems to be an emergent property of the brain. And here's where it gets interesting. Several neuroscientific studies that measured the activity of neurons, found that neurotransmitters firing rates ramp up just before a decision is consciously made. Essentially before you consciously make a decision, the brain has already done that for you, giving you an illusion of you being in control. This leaves you as purely an observer trapped inside your body, with the illusion of having free will. At least that illusion is pretty convincing, so you might as well not think about it. But are you tired of feeling like your online choices are being controlled by outside forces? With today's sponsor, you can take back control of your internet experience and exercise your right to free will. 
Private Internet Access is a VPN provider that offers a transparent, no-logs policy with over 30 million downloads. It encrypts your internet connection and hides your IP address, providing protection from your internet service provider, network administrators, and government sensors. This VPN service allows you to access more content than ever before anywhere in the world, and it works with all major streaming services, and recently, they have launched a new feature which is the availability of IP addresses in all 50 US states. This allows you to avoid sporting event blackouts, access local websites blocked outside of state borders, and even watch television premieres before they show up in your time zone. Private internet access also blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites, keeping users safe from hackers. It allows you to protect up to 10 devices at the same time with one subscription while offering a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support. Follow the link in the description and get an 83% discount for private internet access at just $2.03 a month, plus 4 extra months completely for free. Hurry up! And now back to our existential theories. Remember how free will was potentially a very intricate illusion of the brain? That's not where the terrors of consciousness end. The brain generating the consciousness, which we determined to be you, can be thought of as a computer generating its virtual environment from its hardware components. And you know what happens when you restart the computer. The virtual environment ceases to exist for a bit and is then generated again. Similarly, when you're fully unconscious, as during general anesthesia, your consciousness ceases to exist temporarily, during which you are gone. But thankfully when your brain turns back on, you're pulled out of the void of darkness back into reality. Right? This is bordering philosophy, but it depends on how you define you. If you are the current instance of your consciousness, if it's gone, you're gone. When the brain turns it back on, a new instance will appear. As long as the brain structure didn't change much, the consciousness will be nearly identical to the previous one, but it will be a different instance due to the break of continuity. The new you will have all the memories prior to you going unconscious, and thus no reason to believe that it wasn't the same consciousness experiencing reality ever since your birth. That's the same argument as to why teleportation or mind uploading would be a bit problematic. So whatever you do, don't break the continuity of your consciousness. Thankfully it seems that you don't go fully unconscious when you sleep, so you can rest assured at night. Not much that you can do with this information, but this video is about existential terrors for a reason. So remember how strange matter would convert anything it comes in contact with. Vacuum decay is a similar scenario but on steroids. The idea refers to the hypothetical possibility that the vacuum state of our universe, which we think is at its lowest energy state, could transition to an even lower energy state if we are wrong. This transition, also known as a false vacuum decay, could result in a catastrophic release of energy in the form of an ever-growing bubble at the speed of light, converting everything it touches to a lower energy field, destroying matter in the process. The transition to the true vacuum state could be triggered by quantum fluctuations, and the release of energy could be enough to destroy our universe or at least make it very likely uninhabitable. And given its expansion at the speed of light, we would never see it come. Given enough time, everything that can happen, will happen. This is the mathematical truth that is at the basis of eternal recurrence. Given any non-zero probability for any event and endless time, every such event will happen an infinite amount of times. So the question is, do we have an infinite amount of time? There was most definitely a beginning, the Big Bang. What was before, we don't yet know. A fairly popular theory is that of the recurrent universe. Scientists predict that the fate of the universe is to die of a heat death that is cooling down and expanding into nothingness over a very, very, very long period of time, until almost nothing remains. And with astronomically small odds, which most importantly are non-zero, 
a new Big Bang will eventually be triggered by random quantum fluctuations, a possible origin of our own universe. If this is true, here are the implications. There has been and there will be an infinite number of universes. An infinite amount of them will be an exact replica of this current one, and an infinite amount of them will be different. Your current life will, and has been relived forever, and so will your wildest dreams and worst nightmares. But if we go by our prior definition of consciousness, it will be a different instance living each life, so you might get to rest inside the void in the meantime. Following right up on the previous idea, given infinite time, it is much more likely that in the void of space, quantum fluctuations would give rise to a pseudobrain with an exact neural structure that would store all of your memories and experiences, than that it would give rise to an entire universe. It's pure probability, similarly to how the odds of a single real English word showing up when one shakes a box of Scrabble letters are greater than the odds that a whole English sentence or paragraph will form. Such an idea is called a Boltzmann brain. Because of it having a non-zero probability of happening, it seems to be more likely that you are just a floating brain in the void hallucinating reality. In that case you can at least credit yourself for coming up with every philosophical quote in the world, including that one by Descartes, that proves that you at the very least exist, even if only a floating piece of jelly in an ocean of infinite darkness. So remember how potentially everything has happened and will happen forever. Let's add an entire new dimension of infinity to the equation using quantum physics. For the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, each time that a wave function collapses, such as the superposition of an electron orbiting an atom, for every possible outcome, reality splits, so that all outcomes actually happen, just in parallel universes. That means that each instance, for every atom in the universe, reality splits trillions of times. Essentially every possible path for the universe to evolve, happens in a parallel reality. In some you got bored and clicked away from this video a minute ago, in others a gamma ray jet hit Earth's atmosphere and fried everything with it a second ago. So with this out of the way, quantum immortality. If there is a bomb with a 50% chance of exploding each second next to you, following the many worlds interpretation, the universe would split each second into one of you surviving and the other one of you exploding, and so for each passing second. With this in mind, there will only be one path in which you survive, and given it's the only one, your consciousness will transfer itself down that line. So from your perspective, you'd just be standing by the bomb wondering why it never explodes, without realizing that in millions of parallel worlds you are already dead. As long as you have a chance for survival, your consciousness will exist in that universe, and from that perspective, you'll be immortal. I have an entire video on this topic if you're curious. But now let's continue to the one truly disturbing existential realization. The one that soon you'll have to go back to work or school. Sorry. Sucks being human. 